Hey, what's up everybody? I'm going to show you how to make a skill tree in RPG Maker MV. Alright, so what we've got right here, it's just your main map. We've got one actor, no skills, 4 SP, which is something that I set up. First thing, if you only have one actor in your party, you only get to select him. Go over here, to this tree, pull some party members out of the tree, take the tree with me. Okay, now I can select all of them because I have four party members and they all have four SP. So, let's go into the skill tree. And this is what it looks like. So you have little nodes here. Everything here is clickable, except for this. This is part of Hut Maker. It just shows how much SP you have to spend. So you can click on everything here. And this I have labeled as max level skills. This is kind of an idea I was throwing around. I'm actually not even using this, but I figured it would be nice for people to see. So, say your max level is 50, it takes level 50 to learn that. That's the only one that's set up, I don't have any of these invented, I just have the names on them, just for placeholders. You can name them whatever you want, you can put, you can put the little notes wherever you want, you can draw the lines, this back image is, and all these lines, it's a parallax. skill. You want to click on this skill. This is the first skill that you have. You can't click on anything else until you learn this one. Learn this. It turns green. You've learned it. So now you can click on these and learn this. You want to learn fire. Okay. You can't learn ice because you learned fire. That was a branch. But now that you've learned fire, cost 1 SP, so you learn 3, you have 1 SP left. This is how it's set up. You can have custom costs on yours. That will be all part of the eventing. Alright, so exit the skill tree. I go back into the menu. You can see that her HP has changed. And she's learned 2 skills. Fire and wind. Alright, now we want to reverse that. Skills, you can unlearn them. Now, you can't just go to any skill and unlearn it until you unlearn the last one in the chain. So, unlearn that. I can unlearn fire. And I can unlearn HP. Get all my SP back, I get one SP every time. Learn it. First thing, you're gonna need a few plugins. Uh, you got, I got some EFL plugins, so obviously the core engine, uh, skill core, uh, job points. So yeah, that's gonna dictate how you can learn and unlearn skills. Uh, region restrictions, because you teleport around the map whenever you click on a node, your character's invisible, but you're teleporting around just so that you can't move. It's probably unnecessary. This is how I have it set up. Let's go through the rest of the plugins. Uh, event mini labels, that's the names that you saw on each of the nodes and on the other events. It's not mandatory if you have custom icons, if you have a description that pops up when you click on an icon. Very useful, very useful for more than just this. It's a really good plugin. Uh, Super Tools Engine. Another great plugin. Uh, I had to use, have to have it installed because I'm using HUD Maker, which gives me the ability to have the uh, SP amount display. Uh, this so it allows you to have click events. 
and a lot of other stuff. But what I'm basically just what I'm using is uh, this right here. Click activate. If you put this in events note tag, then it triggers when you click on it. And then we got disable choice, which is what I had check whenever you only have one party member. You can't select party members two, three, and four. So anyway, this the mouse plugin. Every event in the skill tree has this. You just put this right here, click underscore activate with the exclamation point. So I'll go ahead and show you how I have my events set up. I do have common events, but real quick I'll show you this mini label it tells you what it gives you and has a color assigned to it. That one's that's red because you haven't learned it yet. And the buffer just is to move the label. This one, this common event is what every event has on it and it's what allows you to teleport to the event it saves its own variable ID when you click on it it gives you the option to learn it if you want to learn it then it runs this common event to reduce your SP by one and then gives your actor your current actor that's selected for the skill tree whichever one you're learning skills on gives them 10 HP when you learn a skill it turns on its self switch A, which allows you to unlearn it. When you've learned it, it turns green. That's color number 11. It gives you your SP back if you want to unlearn it, and then reverses the effect. And then the last page, this is self switch B. It just basically does nothing. It, it shows a green label, and you can still teleport to it, but you can't do anything with it. And that is managed by linked events. So this is the next skill in the link. This set, this ask if the self switch for event three on this map, game map, map ID, that's this map, ask if it's on. And if it is, then you can learn this skill. If it's not, then it won't do anything. They also ask if number 23 is on. This, this is 23 your event numbers are going to be different. Um, so if if you've learned this skill, you can't learn this one, and vice versa. This one, this event has the same thing to check for this skill because of that branch. Depending on the format, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can have them branch off 20 different ways. You just have to check for all 20 of those skills. And so again, when you learn it, you lose one SP, this one it's the fire skill, so it gives you fire. And then this right here, this is probably the most important thing. Turning on self switches. Now this turns on self switch B for event 3, which is this purple orb. That's my first skill in the chain. Self switch B, when it gets turned on, it doesn't allow you to unlearn this, so you can't learn this, learn this, and then unlearn that because you, you don't really care about 10 HP, you want the fire skill. No, you have to have that to have this. And like I said, this is a parallax. Like Basically, you just take a background image, you screenshot your map with your, all your, your nodes on it. Screenshot it without the parallax, obviously. And then go into an image editing software, make the parallax, draw the lines, and then come in put it into the game. Alright, so now these are all pretty important, the common events. So when you're in the skill tree, this one teleports you to whatever event that you have clicked. It just saves the variable of that event and then transfers you. It needs to be on none so that you don't have a screen fade. It just creates the illusion of not transferring. And I'll show you all the variables that I have. Ten, I got ten variables. That's what this feature takes for me anyway. So you've got these three teleports you to an event. You got these three that saves your map ID whenever you actually go into the skill tree so that whenever you leave you'll go back to right to where you were. Chances are if you have any kind of teleport system in your game already you're already gonna have these three or these six. Actor select whenever the actor list comes up Whenever you're going to the skill tree, you select an actor. That just saves the ID of the actor. 
a party count that gets the number of people in your party so that you can't select a choice that isn't there. That's for uh, the choice disable plugin. Uh, JP, but anyway, it's for the, it's a job points plugin. That's that's what refreshes your job points and gets the number of job points that you have when you go into the skill tree and level check. That's this is totally optional, but that's just for that level 50 skill. You might not have a max level skill section, but you can you can restrict nodes by level. You can restrict them by variables, by switches, by story progression, by quest completed, by you know professions, by you can have make them have item costs. You can pretty much do anything you want. Yeah, it's just kind of like you can fly a skill learn system. This is just a menu, and that, honestly, that's pretty boring just to have a menu. But that's why I made this. So let's go to actor select so whenever that list pops up party list this is what runs whenever you want to go to the skill tree this this is just a big script call that gets your party member count you need to set this line to the total amount of actors in your database I have seven actors even though I really only have four but it's your it's your maximum and all this mumbo jumbo down here just get your party member count so party member count because one means you only have one actor in your party it disables choices two through four if you only have two if you have two then it disables three and four if you have three it only disables number four so this down here this is your choice list you'll save the actor ID of that actor c slash p1 gives the name of party member number one and two, three, four, so on and so on. If there's no actor in your party, it'll show up blank. You also won't be able to select that. If you do, you'll probably break the game. So you definitely want to disable the choices. Now, actor select. This is what transports you in into the skill tree based on the actor that you selected. Disables menu access so that whenever you're in the skill tree, you're not opening your menu and doing all kinds of other stuff. That that would be bad. Uh, turns your char character invisible. Direction fix on so that you don't have to save the direction that you're facing. Whenever you you know leave the skill tree, you're facing a different direction. You don't want that. It gives everything the illusion that you didn't really go anywhere. You're gonna want to change the maps to corresponding actors, even if they're not linear like this. Whichever map that you want a certain actor to go to that's what you're going to change it to. Now if you have to set up by class you want them to have their own skill tree you're still going to have to set up a map for each actor. This switch one this is what the HUD maker uses it just turns on a switch so that it shows you how much SP you have. Uh, this variable saves the JP variable to the actor that you selected. It saves it to their the amount of JP that they have and then level check it gets their level if you have max level skills and finally it transfers to their actors specific trees this is what you're gonna have to you're gonna have to add a little section for every actor that you have in your game I don't really know if there's a way around it there probably is with the script call but I haven't looked into that yet all right so leave skill tree this is just when you click on the exit up there it disables the HUD maker overlay sets actors like to zero doesn't really have to do that but just for safe measure. Uh, turns your extra fix off so that you don't look like you're doing a moonwalk. Transfers the player back to the previous map. Gives you access to your menu. Shows your character again. SP minus one learn is whenever you learn a skill you'll have if you don't have any JP it'll play a sound effect and won't do anything. You can insert a message in there if you want. Uh, the little the script call this makes your current actor lose one. You can change that to whatever amount you want. If you want everything to cost three, you can change it to three or thirty or whatever. And then it refresh. This basically just refreshes the amount for the HUD maker. Otherwise, it it wouldn't update, and it would tell you that you still have 
the amount of SP you start out with, and it would be misleading. Place the sound effect. Turn cell switch A on. Any any of the these events in here, when you turn cell switch A on, it's going to give you the skill that you've learned and allow you to then unlearn it, as long as the conditions are met. And you don't even have to have unlearn in here. Like if you want to just have your actors learn the skills and then not get an option to reset making choices matter then totally do that too probably be a lot less processing a lot less eventing but this is a good option so this is whenever you unlearn something this is the common event that runs you'll gain however many job points that you spent on the skill if you want to set this up per skill if you want to set up this and this per skill then you're gonna have to put them in the events themselves you can't put them in the common events because then it obviously will just run the same thing this refreshes the JP plays the sound effect turns cell switch A off so that you can learn it once again if you changed your mind and that's it just uh, six common events ten variables nine of which are essential just level check this is only if you have a level barriers and one switch so that's it, you've seen one switch and ten variables. If you got any questions, just let me know in the post. Just post a reply or send me a private message. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Alright, peace.